Hello and welcome to another video by me, Tell Tacos. Today, we are gonna be creating a leader stats, which is really simple to do. First, I'm gonna show how to do it with one value and then two values. Both are pretty much the same, but I'm just gonna show you in case you need help anyways. So, we're gonna start off by going to the service group service and adding a script. Name that script leader stats. So, we're gonna start off by making just a list of stats. So, game.players.playerAddit connect function and then player. This is just player, and this is whenever a player joins the game. This the function is gonna activate. So, do local leader stats stats is equal to instance.new folder. And then we're gonna name this folder. So leader stats name is equal to leader stats. So I just want to explain real quick what why we're naming it leader stats. So if you name this folder leader stats, it's gonna show up in um, what do you say? Let's I'm gonna show you. So it's gonna show up right here beside your name in the I guess you could call it the the leaderboard, yes, the leaderboard is called. So it's gonna show up in the leaderboard if you name it leader stats with all lowercase. So we're just gonna do that first. So leader stats parent is equal to player. And then we're gonna add a value. So just for example, uh, this time I'm just gonna do local money is equal to instance.new. And we're gonna make an int value, it's just a number. And then money dot name is equal to money and then we're gonna do money dot parents is equal to leader stats so I can show you now how it's gonna look like so here we have the money and we have the value under but if we change let's see if uh yeah so if we change this to for example leader stats with an uppercase or capital letter L in the beginning, it's not gonna show up there, but it's still gonna be here in the player. The value is still gonna be in here, and the folder is still gonna be in here, but it's just not gonna show up. So that depends on what you want to do, but for now I'm just gonna name it Leader Stats. And then I'm gonna do local data, and we're just gonna leave it like that. And then local success, success, comma, error message is equal to p call function. And then in here, we're gonna do data. Or actually, I'm just gonna explain what this does first. So, this uh, is gonna basically, first, we're gonna define two variables success and error message. And this is gonna be nothing at the time, but we're gonna equal this to p call function. And this p call function is uh, this is gonna return these two variables when we type this thing when we type in here. It's gonna return these two variables. So it's just gonna set these two variables to whatever this returns. And why we're using a p call? That is because a p call, when an error is in a p call, it doesn't stop the whole script and. Uh, it just continues and uh, returns basically, and it returns these values. So that's why we're using a p call because sometimes Roblox uh, does something kind of wrong with the data store, and it becomes it, it, an error is created instead. And then we w don't want everything to break just because it doesn't fully upload. So we're just gonna type in here: data is equal to. So now we're gonna define up here the data store service. So we're just gonna type data store service or whatever you want. And then that is equal to game get service data store service. And then under that, we're gonna do our, I guess, local data save. So we're just gonna do DS data save and then data store service. 
get data save, get data store, I mean, sorry, uh, it's data store, and then we're just gonna name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna name it data store test, maybe. Just name it whatever you want. Maybe make it fit whatever you're doing. So we'll go down here again. Data is equal to data store. Uh, get async and then we're gonna type player player oh sorry player dot user id comma all right so not not comma just like this so this is the key to a specific data store for a specific specific player and we're using the user id to specify the player instead of the username because if you use the username they, they can change the username basically but we're also gonna do something here to specify which value it actually wants so before this I'm just gonna do like this we type money then combine this with that so now we're gonna specify that this is the money key we're using here it's the money variable that we're saving Otherwise, we wouldn't know that. So, we're all done uh, with this. Uh, or actually, no. I'm just kidding. We're not. We're going to type if success. Then. So, if this actually works, if it doesn't return an error message, then we want to set the money to the data. And money.value, actually. Money.value to data. Just like that. And now we're down. We're down done with this part so let's go to the player removing and this is a function that's basically gonna activate whenever someone leaves the game so in here we can just do very simple we'll, we'll copy this and paste it in here and then we do data uh, store and then set async and then we're gonna copy this key we have. I'll also type player here. Copy that. And then we're gonna do player dot leaders stats dot money dot value. So we're just gonna we're just gonna take whatever the player's money value is right now, and we're just gonna upload it to the data store. And you're all done there. So we can test it out right now. And I have actually just created a thing here. So I can easily uh, see and increase my money. <laughs> so when I... Oh, where is it? Oh, well. Let's just... Uh, oh. This is confusing. Huh. Oh, well. Um, I think I forgot to move it but if you want to change a value just from here you can click click on this uh, thing otherwise you're just gonna change it locally go into players lady stats and then we can just change the money so let's change it to 10 and now when we leave and then we join again we're gonna see that the money is 10 and you're done basically with uh, this part so really quickly now i'm just going to show you how to do it with more than just more than just one value and it's really simple it's basically the same thing so i'm just going to type another one and i'm going to do rebirth instead so rebirth is equal to instant on new int value rebirth dot parent dot name it's equal to rebirth. Rebirth. Dot parent is equal to leader stats. And now that we have this one, over here we have local data. Instead of local data, let's type money data, comma, rebirth. And when you have comma here, it's basically the same thing. Where it is actually uh, 
exactly the same thing as just typing like this. So it's just a faster way of typing that. I'm gonna set the money data to that, and then we're gonna copy this. So the rebirth data, and we're just gonna rename this to maybe rebirth. Or rebirth, actually. We've listed rebirths. Because we want more than one, right? So rebirths. Rebirth data. And now we have that. And let's set the rebirth dot value to the rebirth data and the money dot value to the money data part. And over here, we're just gonna copy this and copy the key. And change this to rebirth. And that's basically everything you need to do now. So now you have two values that you can save. So as you can see, uh, I have six rebirth now for some reason. Um, that is pretty odd. But I think it's because I have done this earlier. So as you can see now. If I click this, I have 45 rebirths, and let's do 45, 43 money. If I leave now, we have the same. But be wary that sometimes Roblox Studio can make it so this doesn't save properly. So it could have been... Uh, Roblox Studios fault if it isn't working for you guys or it may be your code But it could also be Roblox Studio. Yes, you know So there you're basically done uh, or you are done actually so thank you so much for watching the video and uh, leave a comment uh, What I should do next and Yeah Have a good time. Bye. Bye